we're running a Moodle right now in the cloud. So that's sweet. So as a developer, what else might we want to be able to do? Well, one thing would be running PHP scripts. So if we go back into our terminal, we have the code base here, and that's how you would do it. You would just go PHP, and we can do something like checks, right? That's how you run a PHP script. And you can see that part of the checks of Moodle is that we have cron running. Cron is this background task that's going to sit in the back of our web server and just run notifications and recycle bin deletions and stuff like that. So we do want to have that running. Let's get cron up and running because that's, that's a very important part of hosting a Moodle. You need cron running, otherwise Moodle basically doesn't work because it doesn't send notifications, it doesn't process uh, assignments and stuff in the background. So to get cron running, Cron is an extra little daemon. It runs on the operating system itself. It's not really like a part of Moodle. Cron is already running just as part of the instance itself outside of Moodle. This is our Moodle code. The script that we want to run in Cron is part of Moodle already. And it's sitting in admin, uh, is it CLI, Cron? Yeah, that one, cron.php there. We need to tell this bitnami instance to run this file every minute. That's what we need to do. We can run it now manually, just like how you would run any, you know, PHP script. And there it goes, and it did some stuff. But I don't want to have to sit here and keep doing this every minute. You see? That's going to be pretty tough. Let's get the bitnami instance to run it instead of us. So there is a command for that. Now I'm just going to Google cron middle docs. Yeah. Yeah, this is what we need right here. There's a cron tab file that the cron daemon looks at. It runs every command on there, and this is how you specify it. Let's go back into here. So we basically want to do this. So we're going to go sudo cron tab dash e. That means I want to edit the cron tab. So what we need to do is open that cron tab file, and the command we need is this one here. Oh, not a command, but it's it's just like the way the syntax of telling the cron on this instance to run this particular cron.php file every minute. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And we can write and quit that. And then let's go back into our Moodle site and actually check if that's running. So if we go to server task logs, yeah, this will show the latest time. So I'm not I'm I'm in the site right now. I'm just gonna do a quick refresh. What we should see, and what I'm looking at is this start time here. So that's the latest one that's run, and that might have been when I ran it manually. But now that we've got cron in there, oh yeah, see that? Now it's starting to actually just run it automatically. If we sit here for another minute and keep refreshing, it should just keep running again. Some tasks run every single minute, like maybe I guess this one is running every minute, but some of them won't. They run every 15 minutes or whatever. Okay, so... A minute has gone by. Let's refresh the page again. Yeah, and you can see some of these tasks have run again. So that's all looking good with cron being set up. So we can close these pages. So now that we're configuring our app to kind of talk to our database, you might kind of be wondering if you go back to this page in LightSail, what's going on here with this databases? Because it says we have no database right now, but obviously we do because here is our site is talking to a database. But what that means is that we don't have a managed database. See, there's different services, and one of them is called RDS, which is like a database service, is like a self-managed database, where you don't really worry too much about spinning it up yourself, but you let AWS have its own database instance. So that would be an option if you had a more popular, busy Moodle site. You might need a dedicated database separate to your actual instance. Because right now, we've got this instance. If this went down, we would lose our database with it because it's all on there. It's also quite convenient because right now we could easily go in and take a snapshot of this instance and that would include all the database data. And so everything can kind of be backed up and spun up as one instance altogether. So it's also got advantages. But basically, you could create a database instance here separate to your Moodle and you'd spin it up and basically what happen, what would happen is that you'd get a database username and password and you'd get a special kind of URL. 
and then as soon as you click create here as long as it's in the same region as your current instance what you would do then is take your details here and just go over into Moodle and you could put that in here instead of using this database and username password and localhost you would change localhost to your special AWS URL and you would change the other details there and then you'd be connecting your app to this managed database instead. You could do the same thing with storage. So with storage, you could create a separate disk. So that would mean you could connect your Moodle, um, what's it called, the data route, and instead of just to a, a folder on this instance, it could be onto a mounted disk, which you would mount following the instructions and it would be like somewhere like this. And that's kind of a separate disk then. That's not part of this instance. And so what would happen is that you would have a separate storage and a separate database and a separate instance. So it could be a nice way to separate things. The disk persists independently from the life of the instance. So if something happened to the instance, you'd still be fine. You wouldn't lose any data. But for now, I'm going to leave everything. I'm going to leave everything in the instance because that's fine as well. There are plenty of Moodle sites around that are just running on the instance without managed databases and stuff. So that's okay. Okay, so we've got our instance there and we talked about options with databases and storage and stuff. You could easily update the code, of course, by, um, you know, changing to a different Git branch. One thing as a developer we'd want to also do is be able to look at the database itself, look at the data. The image comes with PHP MyAdmin. Normally, what you'd be able to do on your local machine is come into the URL and put PHP MyAdmin on the end. Now that it's running on a remote server, that's not going to work because it's only accessible using localhost as the host name. But we can fix that. So from here, let's just do a search for um, NAMI LAMP. LAMP package, yeah. So this is going to tell us everything to do with our specific image that we've spun up, which is sweet. Uh, we want to connect to phpMyAdmin. Here we go. Yeah, we want to connect to phpMyAdmin, but of course we have this problem right now. So if we just scroll down to the Linux area, we open terminal. And we need to do this. This is the command we need. That key file bitnami at server IP. So we got that. Uh, we have to do it from our local machine. So not on there. We got that. Our key file at. And now that doesn't output anything, but it just kind of sits there creating an SSH tunnel. So now that is running and that is kind of taking over our local 127, you know, uh, local host IP. So this is still not going to work, but I can put that in there now. We've got to put our details in there. You know, as soon as, if I just cancel that and refresh, of course it's not going to work because now it's looking on my local machine. I have nothing running. We need to have the SSH tunnel up. Then it's connected to that instance. That's not the right password. Password is... Well, I have to get it from... Uh, you have to get it from in here. You have to go config.php grep something like that that's our password put that in there stopped running my tunnel so now I'm logged in there and I can see the Moodle database and everything going on in there and you can do something similar to connect to the database through like PHP storm or your IDE as well um, yeah, the log store table has a bunch of events in there. Yeah, very useful and it's good to have set up as well. We can access the database. We have got cron set up. We can run PHP scripts. 